remember when you were a superhero? I don't know what you mean, Elvis. I am a superhero. Right. My mistake. Wait a minute! <gasps> what are you wearing? It's so sexy! Alien cloven, baby. Oh, yeah. Do you guys want to look as sexy as Nicolas Cage? <laughs> I know I want to. Well, you can by going to AlienClothing.com, my personal clothing brand. We are constantly releasing new clothing. Just take a look at all this stuff. We have shirts. We have bucket hats. We've even got matching cyberpunk hoodie and joggers. We got the cool stuff around. Do you like this hat? Do you like this shirt? Huh? Do you like this shirt? Well, you can get them at AlienClothing.com. And here's a special offer for all my viewers out there. For the next 48 hours, you can use code CAGE at checkout to get 15% off your order. That's right, use code CAGE at checkout and look as sexy as Nicolas Cage. You got it. What code do they have to use, Nick? Code CAGE. That's, that's right, code CAGE. <laughs> AlienClothing.com. Get something. Today, we're traveling back in time to check out the Ghost Rider movies. I've been wanting to make a review on these movies for a long time, and hundreds of you have asked me to make this video, and poor Bippin KC posted this comment. Has he done Ghost Rider? A month has passed, and there have been no replies. So I will reply to you, Bippin KC. Yes, I'm doing Ghost Rider right, right now. now for you. I know lots of other people want it, but I'm doing it just for you, Bippin. Because nobody had the common decency to reply to you. I mean, you could have just went to my channel and looked for it. The original Ghost Rider was written and directed by Mark Steven Johnson, the same guy responsible for one of the worst superhero movies ever made, Daredevil starring Ben Affleck. So I guess Mark Steven Johnson is like the king of bad early superhero movies. But don't get me wrong, I still really enjoyed Ghost Rider. I think this movie is great. It's cheesy. And back in 2007, superhero movies were not what they are today. They weren't these massive projects with a ton of high profile celebrities involved. They were seen as goofy and and dumb superhero movies. And that's exactly what they are. So Mark was making movies for this genre that didn't hit its stride yet. It just sucks to kick Ghost Rider in the balls with Nicolas Cage as the main actor and give it such a bad reputation so early on because I would love a third installment with old man angry Nick Cage. Imagine a Ghost Rider 3 with the same tone as Logan and Nick Cage brings in the same acting like he did in Mandy. I think there's huge potential to make an amazing Ghost Rider movie. Just give it another chance. Come on, James Mangold. You know you want to do it, dude. <laughs> and then you have dumb channels like Looper making videos like this. The real reason Marvel won't give Ghost Rider another movie. And apparently this is what Nicolas Cage had to say when asked if there would be a third installment. I've said what I have to say. I don't want to say never. Anything's possible. But I doubt, highly, that I would be in a third installment of that. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> it's possible? Okay then. It's happening. I think Disney is just scared that there isn't a high enough demand for a movie like this, but I think they would be surprised. If there was a great director behind it, then hype would probably build, especially with a really dope trailer and with the Nicolas Cage renaissance going on right now with movies like Mandy, Color Out of Space, Willy's Wonderland, and Pig. Who knows? The story revolves around a guy named Johnny Blaze, who is a stunt motorcycle rider with his dad. As a teenager, he finds out that his dad has cancer. This strange man approaches him and tells him that he can cure his dad's cancer, and all he has to do is sell his soul. This devil is named Mephistopheles. In the movie, he kind of like tricks Johnny Blaze into signing the contract by like pricking his thumb and then blood drips onto it. The next day, Johnny finds that his dad's cancer has been cured, but then he's immediately killed in a stunt accident. Lol. F's in the chat. But yeah, the devil's kind of an asshole. He was like, well, I cured his cancer. <laughs> Years later, Mephistopheles uses Johnny Blaze as his rider to kill his son and enemy, Blackheart. And in return, he promises to return Johnny's soul. And of course, Johnny has no say in this. He's just along for the ride. When Mephistopheles approaches Johnny Blaze at night to propose the contract, his lines are so weird. It's like the beginning to a porno. I like the way you ride, Johnny. Maybe you can ride for me one day. Hmm? Just wanted to tell you how much I enjoyed watching you ride. Come on, don't be a numbskull. Sign the contract, bonehead. <laughs> I'm making these dumb puns because there's a bunch in this movie. They're all over the place. I love how younger Nick Cage looks nothing like older Nick Cage. And you're telling me this guy's supposed to be a teenager? 
He doesn't look like a teenager to me. Here's a picture of young Nick Cage next to this guy, who they want us to believe is young Nick Cage. Yeah, they don't look anything alike. <laughs> So then we fast forward and Johnny Blaze is in his 30s. We learn that he loves candy. He drinks it out of a wine glass. It's very weird. Maybe he did this in the comics. Who knows? He hates alcohol. Why don't you have a beer and relax like everybody else, huh? You know alcohol gives me nightmares. But he loves Howler Monkeys. They're all watching TV. They switch the channel on him and he gets really upset. Oh, wait, wait, could you go back? There's a Howler Monkey special on Discovery Channel. He's like, dude, what the hell? Go back to the Howler Monkeys. <laughs> Later on in the movie, he's watching another show of a karate monkey. And he's really enjoying it. Like he's laughing like a crazy person at this karate monkey. <laughs> I think he likes monkeys a little too much. <laughs> Mac. I watched a YouTube video on the Ghost Rider comics, and most of the stuff in this movie is faithful to the original comics. So Johnny Blaze is about to perform an insane stunt on his motorcycle. But before he does it, he pulls a Badlands Chugs and downs the coffee straight from the pitcher. So yeah, then Johnny jumps over like six helicopters. It's pretty crazy. Wow. <laughs> The scene when Mephistopheles activates Ghost Rider within Johnny is hilarious. He shoots down a street and he's driving so fast that parked cars explode as he passes them and trees just burst into flames. It's probably like his devil energy doing it or something, but I still thought it was funny. The main antagonist in this movie is Blackheart. He's Mephistopheles' son. He's the guy that Johnny has to kill in order to save his soul. So Blackheart has like a band of goons that he travels with and it's like the evil version of Captain Planet almost. All these demons Demons have a different element that they control. One of them controls air. One of them controls earth, I guess, but he never does anything in the movie. And another one controls water. It must have sucked to be this puddle man because he's always drenched because he's the water guy. All right, dude, are you ready to film? Yeah, just lay it on me. All right, dude, here we go. Wonderful. Let's film. They had to like completely soak his clothing before filming. It must've been so uncomfortable. Then we get the amazing scene of Johnny's transformation into Ghost Rider. Most people are familiar with this scene, even if they haven't seen the movie because it's been memed so much. He's screaming and laughing like a maniac. <laughs> I honestly love how he hams it up. The CGI isn't the best, but maybe it was fine for the time. The first demon in Blackheart's band of goons that Ghost Rider kills is Dry Skin Man. I think he controls Earth, but he never does anything, so I'm not sure. All I know is that he could definitely use some moisturizing. He should make love to the Puddle Man. Yeah, he tries to run over Ghost Rider with a truck. Ghost Rider just like gets up and he's like, okay. And he wraps the chain around this guy and he burns him, drying out his already dry skin. Some might even say his skin is bone dry. That's right, Nick. That's right. <laughs> Ghost Rider then summons his bike with a whistle, like it's a horse from Red Dead Redemption. Then he touches it and it transforms into his signature bike, his cool bike. It's way cooler now. And it's burning, it's on fire. Uh-oh, it might explode. No, no, it won't, because it's it's supposed to be on fire. It's, it's devil energy. The love interest in this movie is a girl named Roxanne. Rox! And she's played by Eva Mendez. Earlier in the movie, Johnny asked her out on a date, but obviously he's going through some complications right now, so he couldn't make it. Or some might say he, ghosted her. Sitting alone in this restaurant, Roxanne is feeling kind of down on herself. So she asks the waiter if he thinks that she's pretty. And he goes, meh. Yeah. What? Even if this guy was gay, he would have to admit that she's obviously beautiful. I mean, I think that's probably the joke, right? Maybe that's like, oh, hey, she's not that pretty. But it's still kind of weird, right? Like, <laughs> that's a very strange thing for a waiter to say to someone that he's serving. Do you want a tip? Obviously this movie has a lot of very cheesy dialogue. Sam Elliott is in this movie and he plays a groundskeeper. He finds Johnny laying next to his father's grave and he says, Morning bonehead. Do you guys get it? It's funny. Later he asks Johnny if he's okay and Johnny replies, I feel like my skull's on fire. Wow. wow. And Jesus, Nicolas Cage got ripped for this role. Look at this scene. His body is all like oiled up and tanned. It's like he's about to pose in front of an Abercrombie and Fitch for a couple hours. He then goofs up the scene by biting together. He like pushes up his nose like a weirdo and does this. <laughs> 
I guess he's trying to see what he looks like as a skeleton. I love that they weren't afraid to get goofy in this movie. Johnny meets up with Roxanne later on in the movie, and he tells her that he turns into a monster at night. I saw my soul of the devil. She calls him crazy and leaves. Her job is a news reporter, and she goes to report on a crazy event that's happening deeper in the city. She finds Ghost Rider, and she immediately comes to the conclusion that that must be Johnny. Because, I mean, he told her that he turns into a monster at night, and he must have been talking about this the skeleton that's on fire in front of her. That must be Johnny. That's the only conclusion we can come to. <laughs> so the police arrest Johnny. They blame him for the Blackheart murders for like no reason. So they throw him in jail. Ghost Rider has this thing called the penance stare. He turns the sins of the evil people that he's looking at against them and burns them from the inside out. So he's locked in a cell full of evil inmates and he's trying to resist Ghost Rider from taking control. These men know who Johnny Blaze is and they want to beat him up because he's famous, I guess. Like there's no other reason. They just, they wanna beat up a famous person. They have no other problems with them. They just don't like famous people. There's this one kid in there with them and he's just sitting there like, oh shit, <laughs> stuff's about to go down. Johnny Blaze then starts laughing maniacally. Everyone in this massive jail cell, aside from the kid, starts beating up on Johnny. And then he explodes into Ghost Rider, killing all of them aside from the kid. I like how the sprinklers activate. It's a nice touch. I love all these scenes when Johnny is trying to resist the Ghost Rider because Nick Cage hams it up like crazy. <laughs> He's like, oh God, it's taking control. No. <laughs> So then Ghost Rider escapes prison. He rides his bike away, but then he's cornered by the police. So he just drops into the water and rides on the water like Jesus. And then he rides up the side of a building like Spider-Man. I mean, this bike can travel anywhere. Pretty crazy. So the wind demon comes out of nowhere and he's like, hey, Ghost Rider, you're done for. And then Ghost Rider kills him in like two seconds. Before killing him, he says this iconic line. Time to clear the air. <laughs> I love how insane this movie is. In most superhero movies, the heroes are either known to exist in the universe and they coexist with the populace, or they actively try to hide themselves. In this movie, Ghost Rider just goes balls to the wall. Ghost Rider exists and he doesn't care if the entire world knows. So when Ghost Rider is surrounded by the police, the chief yells, prepare to fire. Prepare to fire. I wasn't watching it with captions and I honestly thought he yelled, Pedophile! Pedophile! And this is right before they light him up. So I'm like, damn. Was there a scene when he like rode past a school too fast or something? Like, what? I was very confused. So remember the groundskeeper from earlier? It turns out he's Carter Slade, the original Ghost Rider. He's like this Western cowboy version that rides on a horse. Carter Slade was saving his one last transformation to ride off with Johnny Blaze to face Blackheart. Except they don't face him together. Yeah, Carter Slade just wanted to ride with him. He didn't want to fight or anything. He just wanted to chill with him for a while as a ghost rider. <laughs> I was kind of let down by this. I think it'd be cool if he showed up at some point and did something, but he doesn't. He does give Johnny his repeater though. So Carter Slade gives the scroll of souls to Johnny Blaze and then he fucks off. Ghost Rider is like riding through a swamp and he gets bamboozled by the puddle demon. He kills him in half a second. It's like just a minor inconvenience. He eventually encounters Blackheart. Dun, dun, dun. But the sun is rising and he can only become Ghost Rider in the dark in the shadows. Blackheart kidnapped Roxanne, and all he wants is the scroll to become a super, super demon. demon. So Johnny Blaze gives him the scroll in exchange for Roxanne, and he uses the scroll to absorb all 1,000 souls from the contract, and he turns into a red-eyed cringe lord named Legion. The effects leave a lot to be desired. <laughs> Most of the effects on Blackheart are pretty bad, but whatever. So you know those memes that are going around of like a character saying the name of the movie that they're in as if it's like actual dialogue from the movie, but it's not, it's just to confuse people with like Frodo saying, I am the Lord of the Rings. Well, in this movie, they do that. Like they do the meme. Oh, Ghost Rider. What, we some kind of... Suicide Squad. So in order to defeat Blackheart, Johnny Blaze finds some shadow and he transforms the repeater into like the Ghost Rider repeater and he does some damage, but it's not enough. Blackheart just like fuses together again. So Ghost Rider approaches him and gives him the pen and stare. And he turns the sins of the soul he's looking at against itself. And Blackheart's kind of a moron and he absorbed 1000 of them. So yeah, he's screwed. The pen and stare obliterates him. This is even funnier because earlier in the movie, Ghost Rider tried to use the pen and stare on Blackheart, but it failed because Blackheart doesn't have a soul. I guess this was just like a major oversight by Blackheart. <laughs> 
<laughs> he probably should have killed the Ghost Rider first. Mephistopheles arrives at the end of the movie to take back the power of the Ghost Rider and give Johnny back his soul. Johnny refuses because he knows what Mephistopheles will do with all these souls if he has them in his possession. And he delivers this epic speech. I'm gonna own this curse and I'm gonna use it against you. Overall, I found this movie cheesy, badass, and incredibly entertaining. Okay, so now is the time we'll be talking about the sequel, Ghost Rider. Spirit of Vengeance. That's right. So there's this random guy named Moreau, and he rides his bike into Hogwarts. The place gets raided by soldiers, and they're led by this guy. He has very beautiful hair. It's very distracting, like he must have spent at least an hour on it this morning. Because wow, I'm jealous. It's like he's straight out of Final Fantasy or something. And these guys are after this woman and her kid. Moreau helps them escape. And then we get this monologue by Nick Cage. He's explaining his backstory as Johnny Blaze. And in this version of his story, he deliberately smears his blood on this cheesy devil contract. In the original movie, he was kind of like tricked into signing it, which I think is more devilish, but. This works too. You'll see that they really don't care about continuity between these two movies. This movie was directed by Mark Neveldine and Brian Taylor, the same two men who wrote and directed the movie Crank. Hey, what are you doing? This will get you going. So you know that they mean business. Brian Taylor was the brains behind the amazing Nicolas Cage movie, Mom and Dad. You guys remember the review I made in that movie, right? He's got a hard on for Sawzall. I guess. That means it saws all. And Mark Neveldine was responsible for the movie Gamer. Remember the movie Gamer? Yeah? You're mine, boy. So you already know that if these two guys directed this movie, that it's gotta be great. This movie is less of a sequel than it is like another Ghost Rider movie. You know what I mean? So the rules are broken a little bit in this movie. So Moreau visits Johnny Blaze in his hideout and tasks him with saving the child. He's in danger and for more than his life. And in return, he will help Johnny lift his curse. Even though in the original movie, he had the opportunity to get rid of it, but he decided not to, so. Oh, and the devil's name is Rourke in this movie. It isn't Mephistopheles anymore. That's kind of weird. In the comics, it's Mephistopheles. Maybe Rourke comes later in the comics, I don't know. But the origin story is the same, but his name is just Rourke now. I like the name Mephistopheles more, but Rourke works too, I guess. And then there's a scene of the woman and child. Their names are Nadia and Danny. These guys from the beginning of the movie that were hunting them down, finally track them down and are in the middle of kidnapping them when Ghost Rider arrives. Looks like this is going to be a short movie because Ghost Rider could kill all these guys very easily and save the kid and the woman. And then he'll just get his soul back and that's it really, right? The movie's over. No, no, dear viewer, it's not that simple because Ghost Rider has a huge problem. Procrastination. He just likes to take his time, you know? He wastes so much time killing these men. He just kind of like stands there for a while, looking all mean. He then spends like 10 minutes using his pen and stare on this one soldier. I mean, the rest of the guys are kind of nice and just sit there and stare while he does this. They finally shoot at him once he's done with this guy. So I guess they didn't care much about him. <laughs> they shoot him with grenades, take the kid and leave. <laughs> Get some. Johnny then wakes up in a hospital and he's very strange with the nurse. He starts flirting with her like immediately. When you walked in, I, I, I thought I was still dreaming. He like just woke up and he immediately starts flirting with the nurse. It's weird. He must have morning wood. Or in his case, I don't know, I guess boner works. He then steals some meds and he leaves. And he's like creepily following Nadia instead of just like yelling out to her to wait for him. The editing in this movie is worse than a YouTube video. Check out this scene. I got your package, but the cost of doing business with me just went up. I want more. You understand that? I've seen things, weird things, bad things. The cheesy slide in frames are so distracting. Look at this one frame and the lines aren't any better. So Rourke whispers some devil words into the kid's ear through a phone and it makes him freak out. This is how Rourke describes what he just did to the kid. You know computers, right? I just uploaded a little program. You know computers, right? <laughs> Nope, never heard of them. Please explain. Are you kidding me? You've heard of computers, right? 
<laughs> the pretty boy with the fancy hair is named Kerrigan. He works for Rourke and his job is to capture Danny and bring Danny back to him. Nadia pulls a gun on Johnny because she sees him following her. I don't know why she did this because I would definitely pull a gun on the person that I know can turn into a burning skeleton monster. What? If I were her, I would just be running for my life. But Johnny is able to convince her that he's here to help. So Nadia says, You tracked us last night. Can you do it again? Because she wants him to help her find Danny. How does she know that he can track people? That's kind of weird. He could have found them a bunch of other ways. He could have just been following them. Someone could have told him where they were headed. There's a bunch of ways he could have known where they were going. But yeah, I guess she just knows he can track people with his demon senses. When Rourke whispered the devil stuff into the kid's ear, he kind of like deactivated him so the Ghost Rider couldn't track him anymore. But he didn't deactivate Kerrigan or any of his guards. So why wouldn't he just track them instead? You know, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but Danny is the devil's son. So maybe he deactivated him because Ghost Rider can only track other demons or something. So Johnny tells Nadia that he can't track him. He tries to tell her that he can't sense the kid anymore, but it doesn't mean the kid's dead. He was just erased. He's just gone off the tracking system in his brain. Not sure how he could know this, but he does. Johnny and Nadia then travel together and she tells him what she knows. She calls the devil the seducer. She was visited by Rourke just like Johnny was. She was captured and dying and the devil promised to save her life if she would bear a child with him, and she agreed. So Danny is the devil spawn, basically. Nick Cage says, you're the devil's baby mama. <laughs> you're the devil's baby mama. Then there's another random monologue spliced in the middle of this movie, like it's a Borderlands video game or something. Johnny describes that the devil travels from body to body, and it displays a bunch of evil people throughout history. Initially, I thought this guy was Martin Luther King, and I was very confused. <laughs> After some researching, I found that it's actually Idi Amin Dada. They continue flashing more horrible people on screen, like John Wayne Gacy and Joseph Stalin, and then the worst of all. Jerry Springer. From body to body, down through history, waiting for the perfect fit. I am confused, but it was funny. Kerrigan is a complete idiot and didn't think of restraining Danny. So Danny just reaches into the front seat and pulls on the steering wheel and makes them crash. He then wiggles out of the car and runs. Danny jumps and breaks his ankle so Kerrigan is able to catch up with him. And conveniently, there are some nomad hippies right there. So they just steal their van. And finally, Kerrigan smartens up and restrains Danny. Wow. Why was this part in the movie at all? This entire scene was completely unnecessary. They're just driving in a different car now and Danny's restrained. That's all that's changed. That's it. Oh, and Danny breaks his leg, but it just heals because he's a devil spawn. It just heals. So yeah, nothing changed. They just put that in there for no reason. Johnny then tells Nadia that Ghost Rider doesn't discriminate. He just feeds on people's sins. He'll destroy. Whoever's got it coming. If there's a person around that's done evil shit, he will feed on it. Doesn't matter who it is. After this scene, I couldn't help but think of the first movie. Remember that scene when Ghost Rider reaches out to Roxanne as Ghost Rider? That's kind of strange if he just turns into like a mindless monster that just feeds on sin. So I... What? Johnny and Nadia reach Nadia's contact who knows Kerrigan and probably knows where he's headed. They throw him up against a wall and then we get this amazing Nicolas Cage meme. He's scraping at the door. Scraping at the door. He's scraping up against the door. Go let him out. <sighs> oh my God, Nick Cage hams it up so much in this scene. I love it. It's so good. And this scene is made even better because he shoves a cell phone in this guy's mouth and he just stares at this lunatic as he rants like, uh, you okay, bro? <laughs> He's scraping at the door. <laughs> it's so good, dude. The way Nicolas Cage enunciates some words is amazing. Johnny calls him a good girl. Oh my God. It's so good. There's an amazing part when he's like, you will tell me or I will eat your stinking soul, yeah. I will eat your stinking soul, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Crazy, I love it. Johnny Blaze is trying to hold back the Ghost Rider from taking control. That's what's going on here. It's just the way Nick Cage acts it out. It makes it so good. It's also like partially cringy and cheesy and hilarious. Overall, it's just incredibly entertaining. So this guy tells them where Kerrigan is, so they leave. Johnny finds his bike and zooms away. And here's another amazing scene. So I'm just gonna pretend to be on a bike real quick. So Nick Cage is on his bike, right? 
And there's a green screen behind him, obviously. And he starts making these crazy, crazy faces. He's trying to hold back the Ghost Rider. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Oh my god, it's so good. I want the behind the scenes of this part so bad. In the next scene, there are two strange floating lights. Not sure if they're like reflections or lens flares or what, but how did they not catch this in post-production? Maybe they didn't have a lot of takes of this shot, so they had to use it and they just missed this obvious lens flare. Then there's another lens flare on the bottom right in the next shot. What the hell? Obviously this wasn't done on purpose. It's just like an error that they missed while filming, I guess. So yeah, Kerrigan is buying rocket launchers from these arm dealers. Nadia sneaks in and saves Danny. Ghost Rider arrives and Kerrigan fires a rocket at him. Of course, it does nothing. We then get some cool Ghost Rider carnage. And then one of the soldiers uses a flashbang on him. And then something really weird happens. It like stutters his computer programming or something. There's like a glitch in the matrix. He like floats in the air and spins in a circle. It's so weird. Yeah, I'm not sure why that happened. Maybe because the Ghost Rider just likes dark places. So all the light kind of, you know, confused him and made him go bonkers for a little bit. After seeing this, why aren't all of the soldiers just like constantly throwing flashbangs at him? You know, if you see that something's working, keep doing it, right? And then this guy like puts an Uzi right next to his mouth and empties the magazine into him. And Ghost Rider just kind of like eats all the bullets and then sprays it back at him like fire bullet vomit. He then takes a rocket directly to the chest and it does nothing. I'm sorry, did that hurt? I'm not sure why the men aren't running for their lives right now. I know I would be, but they just stick around and keep shooting at him because it's clearly working. <laughs> so Ghost Rider climbs up into this like crane thing. It has like a massive wheel on it and he ignites the entire vehicle in flames and he uses the massive wheel to like crush the men. Yeah, this entire scene is insanity. And surprise, surprise, he kills everybody except for Kerrigan. He like lifts him up, then tosses him aside because if there's anybody that's evil in this group, it's definitely not Kerrigan. What? If this guy feeds on evil people, you think he would love to feed on Kerrigan, but nope, he just tosses him aside. His ADHD kicked in or something. So he decides to ride after Nadia instead of killing Kerrigan. It's so weird. Maybe he was bored of all the dudes. He just wanted some woman action. Who can blame him? So he catches up to them and he's about to give Nadia the pen and stare. But the kid is part devil, so he's able to like force Ghost Rider out of Johnny Blaze. And this was right before Ghost Rider was about to get a good glimpse of Adia's naughty sins. Wink, wink. You know what I mean? Like she's sinned all right. And Ghost Rider was about to get a nice glimpse of all those sins. But this little cock blocking asshole forced him into post nut clarity before he was ready. Not cool, dude. I expected a stunt man to be doing all the Ghost Rider scenes, but it was actually Nick Cage. I watched some BTS footage and yeah, they just like painted a skull on Nicolas Cage and he acted out all these Ghost Rider moments. So yeah, that's pretty sick, right? That just shows that Nick Cage really cares about the roles that he plays. The next day at lunch, Johnny like, reaches out and pets Danny. Hi, doggy. It's so awkward and random and weird. He says that there was a bee in his hair. I thought it was gonna sting your face. But there wasn't. So was he just trying to pet him? What was he doing? I mean, we all know how much Nicolas Cage hates bees. Right, Nick? Oh, no, not the bees! Not the bees! But still... I'm very confused. Johnny then gives Badlands Chugs a run for his money a second time. Don't touch that mouse. <sighs> he just downs that shit. <laughs> you know, cause all the fire within him, you know, can't help but get thirsty. In the next scene, we learn that Kerrigan was crushed by some debris. When did that happen? Because Ghost Rider just like tossed him aside. You don't see any debris fall on him, but maybe that happened later. So Rourke gives him some of his devil powers and turns him into one of the twins from the Matrix. 
He's basically just this moldy albino demon with long ass hair. Kerrigan tries out his new powers on a nearby paramedic. They use a black background during these fighting scenes sometimes to make them more sinister or something, but it just looks goofy as hell. And I guess this was the only paramedic on scene because nobody wonders where he is and there are zero repercussions for killing this random paramedic. I guess there's nobody on scene that saw this or cared. That's weird. The people that work at the hospital didn't wonder why this guy just randomly vanished. Okay. In the next scene, Danny asks a very important question. What if you have to pee while you're Ghost Rider? And apparently his piss turns into lit gasoline. It's goofy shit like this that I love about this movie. So Moreau shows up again randomly. Not sure how he knows where they are. He's kind of like, shows up. Hey, what's up, Moreau? There he is on his bike. Hey, dude. So he leads them to a canyon and it's full of his priest friends. Johnny Blaze then learns that the Ghost Rider is actually a corrupted angel that was originally meant to protect the innocent, but now it just feeds on evil. They bring Danny here as a place to keep him hidden and protected. Moreau has Johnny enter this little chamber. He has a little seizure. And then there's this cool scene of the Ghost Rider with the chain coming out of its mouth. Pretty epic. It has the same vibes of like an early 2000s post-metal music video. The priests decide that they must kill Danny. They have no other choice. Moreau obviously doesn't agree with this, but that doesn't matter. They have them all locked away. Kerrigan arrives before they can kill Danny, and he uses his power of decay on all of them. So I guess Kerrigan is kind of a good guy, because he saves Danny's life. So yeah, huge W for Kerrigan, the decay demon. You go, dude. Kill those evil priests. Bet you're happy to see me. It's explained that Rourke wants the kid because he's using him as a vessel to contain his power. He'll essentially like take over his body because his current body is dying. The priests have an armory, uh, because of course they do. So Moreau, Johnny, and Nadia gather weapons and head to the location where Moreau knows Danny was taken and the ceremony will take place. Rourke has a bunch of his gothic stands there. They're a bunch of Satan worshipers. He's got to have an audience or else what's the point? I guess they're necessary for the ritual or something? Not sure. Nadia uses a sniper rifle with GoldenEye 64 sound effects and takes out the guards along the perimeter. Moreau rushes in with an Uzi that uses Jesus rounds and he starts shooting the Satan worshipers. I say Jesus rounds because one, they come out of thin air because there's no way that his gun could hold that many rounds. And two, because he yells Latin while shooting. It like activates the Jesus bullets so they can kill the Satan worshipers. See, I, I got this all figured out, dude. Kerrigan shows up and grabs Moreau and uses his power of decay on him and kills him. Kieran Hines, the actor that plays Rourke, makes the funniest faces throughout this movie. Just look at him in this scene. <laughs> what is he doing? Kerrigan gets his hands on Johnny, but he doesn't want to kill him. I don't know why, he just doesn't. He's like, not yet. So Danny approaches him and he's like, hey dad, I have the same powers as you, right? So that means that I can give him the Ghost Rider back. So Danny bounces on Johnny and screams Ghost Rider back into him. In the movie, it made for a pretty cool visual, but I bet this was hilarious to see without all the fire effects. Just the kid going. <laughs> Man, Kerrigan kind of dropped the ball on that one. You probably should have killed him when you had the chance. <laughs> He's not the brightest guy out there. Also, I love how there's a scene in this movie where he's trying to eat food, but it all rots in his hand before he can eat it. But then he picks up a Twinkie and he's fine because those last forever. <laughs> the Satan worshipers then surround Ghost Rider. Oh my God, what is he going to do? I mean, he's not really in any trouble. All of them are unarmed. <laughs> They're just dudes in robes. But this next part is kind of badass. The Ghost Rider takes his chain and swings it in a circle and kills all of them. Like, holy shit, now that's a killing spree. Kill you there. While Ghost Rider is occupied, Rourke steals Danny and drives away with him. So Ghost Rider pursues them on his bike. This scene is kind of weird because he's in direct sunlight. And in the original movie, whenever the sun came out, the Ghost Rider would just like disappear and he would turn back into Johnny Blaze. I'm not sure why he isn't turning back into Johnny right now, but whatever, what is continuity anyway? And it's made even weirder because earlier in this movie, when Moreau finds Johnny, he's in this like dark hideout because Ghost Rider likes the dark. Why doesn't he care about the sunlight all of a sudden? It would have been better if he was riding after them and he had like a big umbrella attached to his bike. So he was always in the shade. <laughs> Can you imagine how funny it would be if he was just fighting with an umbrella the entire time to stay in the shade? <laughs> 
So Kerrigan and Ghost Rider are fighting on top of a car and the visuals go back and forth from IRL to black screen. It's really disorienting and weird. After killing Kerrigan, <laughs> Ghost Rider uses his chain to completely total the car that Rourke and Danny are driving in. He then literally lassos and whips Rourke back to hell. Go home. There was just a convenient hole there that led straight to hell and Ghost Rider just flung him directly in there. <laughs> Either that or he flung him with so much force that he just plummeted straight through the earth. That's pretty strong. Remember when Johnny said that Ghost Rider kills indiscriminately? He just likes to feed on sin? Well, at the end of this movie, as Ghost Rider, he saves Danny. It's so weird. This kid is literal devil spawn, but he saves him? What? I guess you could argue that like the angel part of Ghost Rider is more in control now so the sun doesn't affect him and he can save people now i don't know but still i thought it was kind of dumb and of course this movie can't end without a cheesy one-liner or multiple actually nicholas cage ends the movie by saying hell yes did we win i'm gonna say yes <laughs> hell yes and then he says i'm the ghost rider i'm the ghost rider <laughs> so yeah, that's the second movie. I didn't like it as much as the first, but there's still some solid memes and some fun action. This isn't the last time we've seen Ghost Rider on screen. He's currently in the show Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as the Robbie Reyes version of Ghost Rider, but what I wouldn't do to see Nicolas Cage play Johnny Blaze again. So yeah, guys, that will do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Anything else you want to say, Nick? I am the Ghost Rider. Hell yeah. Don't forget to check out the coolest clothing on earth over at AlienClothing.com and let me know if there's any other movies you'd like me to review in the comment section down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. See you in hell, you boneheads. <laughs>